Well, good afternoon. Today is March 18th um, of whatever day it is of this uh, self-quarantine and pandemic and basically a shutdown of our nation. I know that there's uh, fears are running rampant and people don't know about their businesses. Uh, are they going to be able to make it through this? Uh, I know that restaurants are, are doing things that are different than what they've ever done before as far as trying to stay alive and doing uh, curbside pickup and um, expanding their their uh, uh, deliveries. Um, my daughter sent me a ham and cheese grinder today from a local business, A1 Pizza here in Winchester, which uh, I thoroughly enjoy. But I do want you to know that, that uh, <clears throat> we need not fear. Again, uh, it's, it's said by me and so many other uh, pastors and ministers during this time, to remind us that in that God said in 2 Timothy 1 7, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, the, a power, the power of God, uh, sound mindedness. God has given us sound mindedness. He's given us the love uh, that that he has for us. He's given that for us to be able to share even with others. But I do want to share with you a scripture this morning. A couple of scriptures, really, but one out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the things which you heard and learned, you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you hallelujah for that god is telling us you know don't get caught up in everything that's going on don't concentrate on it but meditate on these things meditate on whatever is true whatever is things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely um, of a good report anything is virtue if there's anything praiseworthy look, look at these things meditate on these things you know we have a unique opportunity in this uh, pandemic uh, that has really gripped our nation and gripped this this world gri gripped us globally. <clears throat> you know, uh, it's a, a unique opportunity to see how God is going to work in your life and in mine, in our ministries, in our businesses. You know, uh, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really does, and this has not caught him by surprise. He has you engraved in his hand, as I shared with you yesterday. But I do want to share with you just three basic things on how we can uh, uh, get through this, but not just get through it, but grow in our relationship with God through this. You know, that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to grow. You know, God does not, number one, God does not waste difficulties. Every difficulty that comes our way, everything that comes our way, God's hand is in it somehow, some way, and he wants to reveal himself to you and to me in ways that we couldn't see otherwise. You know, there's this, this is a blessing that we have. There are hidden blessings. I see in Facebook and other uh, social media that people are just just uh, upset and, and how last year was such a, a hard year and this year is going to be even harder and maybe 2021 is going to be, oh man, that's going to be, uh, bad is if this continues on this pattern of negativity and hardship and and difficulties and 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 uh, afflictions and and all of this stuff. What am I going to do? I said, Well, this is what you're going to do. Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report. <clears throat> if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. See, that's what Paul was saying to the Philippian church. Meditate on these things. Don't keep meditating on those other things. I'm not saying we ignore it. But what I am saying is that we need to shift our focus. Because no matter what it is, if God is in it, then God wants to reveal himself to us. <clears throat> these are opportunities for us to grow stronger in him. Grow closer to him in our, re our relationship with him. To love him in deeper ways and to see him function in ways that that we uh we've never seen before so god does not waste difficulties the second thing is that hardship can be a platter of blessing <laughs> imagine that hardship can be a platter of blessings 
What does it say in Psalm 23? You prepare, you Lord, prepare a table, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You prepare a table before me in the presence of, of difficulties and hardship. You prepare that, that banqueting table for me because you love me and I am inscribed in the palm of your hand. So you, you Lord, you are the one that prepares <clears throat> that table. But I'm not going to see that table if all I am doing is concentrating on the storm, if all I'm doing is concentrating on the hardship, all I'm doing is concentrating on the malady that has set before me. You know, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, da, 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 and all that stuff, it says in God's word, meditate on these things. <clears throat> so I need to understand that the hardship can truly be a platter of blessing that is uh, uh, brought before me. The third thing is that praise, we're to praise him throughout this pandemic. Are you praising him? Are you worshiping him? Are you thanking him for his love and for his, his care for you? You know, in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4, it says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You want to get, want to beat out this, this uh, uh, spirit of fear? Then praise him. Praise him and bless his holy name. Hallelujah says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let, he, let us exalt his name together. It's in this pandemic, it's in these difficult times, it's in these hardships, the people of this world are looking at you and looking at me, and how are they as Christians handling this? And do we turn around and say, oh, man, ah, it's been so hard, it's been so difficult, all of these things have been going on, ah, I don't know what to do. Or are we saying, hey... God's in control. I praise him in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you that you have not leaving me and you're not forsaking me. You are not, maybe you sometimes deliver out of the storms, but oftentimes you walk through the storms with me. And I'm going to walk through it with you, Lord. And, 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 I, and I have something that I want to share with you. <clears throat> I know this is a little length, more lengthy than I usually do, but Kathy and I are doing uh, reading through this. I don't know if that's reversed on you, but it's uh, uh, called Jesus Freaks. It's a book of, of, uh, of testimonies. And, and I want to read one to you. Kathy and I uh, are reading our, uh, through this book together and these testimonies. And we read this one last night, and it really, really sparked my heart. It's called I Have to Know. The name of the person is Thomas Hawker in England in 1555. Thomas, his friend lowered his voice so as not to be heard by the guard. I have to ask you this favor. I need to know if what others say about the grace of God is true. Tomorrow, when they burn you at the stake, if the pain is tolerable and your mind is still at peace, lift your hands above your head. Do it right before you die. Thomas, I have to know. Thomas Hawker whispered to his friend, I will. The next morning, Hawker was bound to the stake and the fire was lit. The fire burned a long time, but Hawker remained motionless. His skin was burnt to a crisp and his fingers were gone. Everyone watching supposed he was dead. Suddenly, miraculously, Hawker lifted his hands still on fire over his head. He reached them up to the living God and then with great rejoicing clapped them together three times. The people there broke into shouts of praise and applause. Hawker's friend had his answer. Wow. Hawker's friend had his answer. See, Hawker's friend needed to see Hawker in the midst of such a turmoil, be praise, praising God and, and being enveloped in God's grace. And I dare say, you can be enveloped in the grace of God through this pandemic. <clears throat> I can, you can everyone can please be smart please be safe but please praise the lord thank him that he does not waste this difficulty thank him that hardship is a platter of blessing 
that is put before you. There's a platter of blessing in the midst of that hardship. And praise him throughout this storm. Jesus loves you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had together <clears throat> in uh, this uh, video. I pray that is, this will be a source of encouragement to, to people. Jesus, I thank you that you do love us and that you're walking through this with us. Lord, I pray that, that more people in, in our society will turn to you in this difficult time and, and truly not turn to you just for the difficult time and then turn away from you when the difficulty is over, but really truly turn their life over to you because, Jesus, you gave your life to each one of us when you allowed it to be nailed on the cross over 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, and thank you for your salvation, and thank you, Lord, for your peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard our hearts and minds through you, Lord Jesus. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. See you later.